Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again, uh, those who have been with us. And uh, with the poll, it shows that you guys are very dedicated to visiting us uh, week after week, uh, joining us. My name is Naman Maisarwala. I'm an Autodesk Expert Elite. And um, it's great uh, that Autodesk and Boker and Victoria have given me the opportunity to join you guys every week and uh, help answer questions and or present. Um, today's topic we have is build your AutoCAD IQs, uh, maybe the 49th session. Back to basics, building but lost, revisited. Uh, the presenter is Volker Coco, and uh, Victoria and I will be moderating. So Volker uh, is from Lake, I can't even say that, Oregon. <laughs> And Victoria uh, is from Manchester, New Hampshire, and I am in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, and uh, let's see. So before we get started, uh, you probably uh, receive our emails every week, uh, reminders uh, for an hour and one day, and also it has links to other webinars as well as uh, links to also our data sets. Uh, in the email, so if you, in case you are missing the link, please uh, don't hesitate to go back into your email box and look up this email. And also, if you uh, have any questions, uh, we will be glad to answer them. Just uh, don't hesitate to leave them in the question box. Uh, I wanted to also say a special uh, welcome again to Aliki and uh, Renee for joining us again every week after week, and you all too as well. Um, this session is recorded, and uh, it will be available on our YouTube channel, AutoCAD, 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 AutoCAD Exchange. Uh, the link will be made available as well um, in the registration reminder, as I said. So we have uh, been doing this uh, maybe uh, for a while, and uh, there are some previous uh, auto CAD IQ webinars uh, that are available. Uh, the recent one, Back to Basics, Working with Layers, continues, uh, Tools for Navigation, and uh, third dimension items that we talked about, and uh, my favorite, the Express Tools. You can all access those all at the AutoCAD Exchange, Build Your AutoCAD IQ Web YouTube channel. There is an opportunity for you guys to influence uh, your future AutoCAD releases. And uh, by joining this AutoCAD Customer Council, and uh, it is a great opportunity to voice your um, wishes uh, to the development team. I've been doing that for a long time, and uh, I have seen some of my suggestions uh, as well as the many other voices being heard and implemented into the main product. So that's the, the biggest idea of joining it is, is that you get um, access to the future releases before they are released. Uh, you have the opportunity to do beta tests as well as uh, put in uh, requests and wishes for future releases. So the best is get involved, please. And you can join that by sending an email, autocad.beta at autodesk.com or the AutoCAD LP Council at autodesk.com. There are also uh, Autodesk Knowledge Network, and uh, we they are being updated uh, every day and the uh, newest and featured articles these days. And the top downloads have been the AutoCAD 2016 coordination model OSNAP support, as well as some of the ones that you are going to see on the screen. There are, have been some AutoCAD hot fixes that are available recently and been downloaded many, many times. So in this presentation, we have the link directly to those hot fixes. If you download the presentation, um, you can access those links as well. I'm going to turn over to Victoria to run some polls. Victoria? Thanks, Noman. Um, all right, I've got a couple of polls for you guys today. Um, this one should be familiar to you. 
Uh, the first thing we'd like to know is, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? Is this your first time joining us or are you returning? Um, we'd like to say uh, thank you for those of you who are returning and welcome to those who are attending for the first time. I'll just leave that open for a couple more seconds here. It's looking like most of you have been here before, but uh, almost 20% are uh, newcomers. So again, welcome everybody. I'll just share that for you. There you go, 16%. This is your first webinar and 84%. Uh, welcome back. All right, second poll here. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. What do you hope to gain from this Build Your AutoCAD IQ session? Are you looking to create your own block library? Are you hoping to pick up tips and tricks for defining new blocks? Are you uh, looking to learn um, some better ways uh, for creating blocks? Or are you just killing time with us today? Any of these are fine. Let me leave that open for a couple more seconds and then I'll show you the results. Okay, so it looks like most of you are looking for some tips and tricks and trying to see if there's a better way that you could be creating your blocks, um, followed by a few of you wanting to uh, build your own block library, and then a couple of you are just killing time, and that's okay too. All right, last poll before we get started here. How do you work with blocks? We'd like to know, are you creating your own? Uh, do you typically use an existing block library that uh, maybe your office has provided to you? Do you search for them on the internet? There's plenty of stuff out there. Uh, it's already been created, no need to reinvent the wheel sometimes. Are you using existing blocks from drawings that you created uh, years ago maybe? Um, if you don't know what a block is, what is a block? And we'll tell you all about that today too. So I'll leave that open for another second or two. And then let's close it down and take a look. Right, it looks like most of you are creating, have created your own blocks. Um, all right. So I'm going to hide that. And uh, Noman, let's um, turn it back over to you. Hey, Noman, are you there? Or Volker, did you want to talk about the agenda? Yeah, I think I will. Looks like we lost him on. And um, let me uh, go ahead and get this going here. Excellent. Apologies for that. I see the agenda up there, so take it away. All right. Okay, so in this week's agenda, um, sorry about the delay, and welcome back everybody. In this week's agenda, we're going to be talking about inserting and creating blocks, okay? Now we have two types of blocks, uh, that are local blocks, and local blocks are uh, the blocks you have within an AutoCAD drawing. Then we also have what are called global blocks. Global blocks are basically any drawing file that you have on your hard drive or on the network, um, some external storage device. And uh, any of these can be used within an AutoCAD drawing. We're also going to talk about object properties uh, by layer, by block, by object, and we're going to talk about redefining blocks or updating existing blocks. That's what redefining a block is. It's just updating any block already within your drawing. So some key terms that I want to just cover real quick here. Uh, first of all, um, there were about 5% of the people who, whether it was uh, serious or not, who said, what is a block? Well, a block is just a um, 
symbol of uh, which compound object, circles, lines, arcs, whatever uh, you have in your drawing, which is uh, turned into one object. Okay, and we have two types of blocks, I guess. Uh, well, I won't guess. There are two terms for a block. Let's put it that way. One is called the block definition. This is what AutoCAD sees in the database. Whether that block resides as a tangible object in the AutoCAD drawing or not, there is a definition that is stored in the AutoCAD drawing database. And when we use commands such as insert to bring in an, uh, a local block or internal block, what you are actually inserting is what is called a block reference. Okay, just basically a called a proxy, if you will, of the definition that is stored in the drawing database. So even when you erase all those blocks, the definition still resides. Okay, redefine, another key term. Basically, when you want to make changes to a block in the drawing, you have to redefine that block definition. And basically, you are just making your changes, then updating uh, using uh, one of the many tools available to redefine that block definition or to update it. Object properties. So you've probably seen things like by layer, by block, and even by object. What does all this mean? By layer is when the object, and, and this doesn't have to be a block, okay, it could be a line, a circle, whatever, when it inherits the properties of the layer that you insert it on. So the layer has a color red, line type of hidden, uh, that would be um, uh, then inherited by whatever line work you put on that layer. By block allows um, objects, and not just uh, blocks, but uh, dimensions as well. Dimensions, the arrowheads themselves are blocks, or maybe the extension line, or dimension line. Um, these type of objects to inherit the properties of the host object. So the block itself is by layer, so it assumes the properties of that layer. But some of the line work within that block may be by set to by block. Initially, it inherits the color of the layer, but I can then override the color of any object that is by block by assigning a new color to it or a new line type uh, or line weight for that matter. By object means that I've assigned a color, line type, line weight, whatever property to the object. And it will always retain that regardless of what layer I'm on or what color I want to assign to it. Uh, unless I make a change to the object itself. And uh, this may be kind of vague right now, but uh, I'll have a good example of that as we move along. Base point, I'll be using this quite often as well. Basically, it's the insertion point of the block. And you'll see at the end of the uh, presentation why this is important, uh, but is the insertion point can also be referenced as the base point. We also have what's called a nested block. So basically, you can create a block using multiple blocks, and that would be a nested block. We'll also be covering that, as well as the W block or write block command. Basically, what this does is exports objects from the drawing. It could be a block. It could just be some line work. It could be the drawing itself. Uh, exporting it to the drive to create a new drawing file or just to even clean up and purge the existing drawing file. Just a way of creating a new file from within an AutoCAD drawing. So having said all that, I'm going to go ahead and go into a demo mode here and I will show you how some of this stuff works. Okay, 
So, Victoria, can you let me know if everybody, if you're able to see my screen? Everything looks great, Walker. Okay, good. So, here we have AutoCAD. And today I'm working in AutoCAD. Um, what, I, what I'm doing here can be done in AutoCAD LT, AutoCAD, any of the vertical applications that, um, you know, run on AutoCAD. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at where we can find some of the commands. Most of them will be found on the Insert tab uh, of the ribbon. You can also type in the commands. I'll be doing a little bit of both. Um, older releases where you had toolbars, there were specific toolbars available to do this as well. So here's the Insert command on the block panel. And you'll see there's a little down arrow here as well, which allows me to choose from blocks within the drawing. This is actually called a gallery preview and it was introduced in AutoCAD 2015. If um, you don't care for this or you have so many blocks in your drawings that uh, it actually takes a moment to maybe regenerate and you don't want to wait for that lag, uh, you can certainly turn this off using a system variable called gallery preview and um, all that information will be, uh, is available in the data set, which we'll make available uh, immediately um, after this presentation. Uh, that data set, by the way, will have all the, um, this a little script here, as well as the PowerPoint and all the data files. So anyway, this is the gallery preview. Uh, other options we have here are under create block. We'll be going to this. This is where the write block command exists. Um, I think 2014 was the first time we ever saw this command in the menu system. Prior to that, you actually had to type W or W block. So if you're running a real old version of AutoCAD, you may not find write block uh, on the ribbon or any pull down menu. So just be aware of that. Also, uh, under this a block definition panel, you will see this set base point, which we'll be covering as well. So be aware that that is there. The command itself is base, but um, we'll uh, talk about that when we get to it. So the first thing we see here is a floor plan, and we see some objects in the drawing. Our current layer is zero, but if I select these objects, they are all set to, uh, they've been placed on the layer I fern, and you'll see that the color is by layer. What we have over here is just some line work making up that chair object. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you a couple of different ways that uh, we can insert here. I've got a dining room table here, and I'm just going to pick on this and drag and drop that over here. Notice on the command line that we have numerous options here. Now we can just pick and place it and it'll use all the defaults. But if we want to maybe change the base point or rescale this block uh, to different size, uh, different X, Y, or Z, uh, as well as rotation, we can rotate it. All we have to do is select one of these options. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just plop it right in there now. These are all color red, and these are all uh, a color of white because we did insert it on. That and uh, obviously I could change the properties on that block easily. But I'm going to go ahead and do it the way I would typically want to insert this. And I'm actually going to use object tracking here to place this properly. So that's perfectly aligned. I've aligned it with the midpoint here and the midpoint here. And on this is just a, a block. I can insert it as many times. I can copy, rotate it, whatever. Now, uh, so that, that's one way to insert a block. Um, there are certainly other methods as well. I'm just going to quickly go to a new drawing. And I'm going to use Control-3. And we have our tool palettes. Here we can drag and drop a block into a drawing, uh, a door. Notice how large they are. That's because all blocks are 
drawn or should be drawn in real world sizes. So a three foot door should be a three foot door. Uh, unless it's symbology uh, that is uh, more diagrammatic or, or something, uh, you, you can scale that up or down, but um, you know, this table here, whatever length it is, that's a real size table. So uh, there's no need to draw those at any other scale than, than a one-to-one -one scale. All right, so uh, we've inserted this block, and that's how you typically insert any block. There is one other option, and that is block. Um, is that it? Oops. Sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and select block, more options. Okay, so here's our other and typical fashion of inserting a block. Now, this dialog here shows all the blocks already existing within this drawing. It also allows me to browse the hard drive or network drive or a cloud location, um, whatever, where I can insert a block from it. The options you saw previously on the command line are also listed here. So we have insertion point, here's your scale, rotation, uh, the angle, uh, everything here is set to a default, but you can certainly override that. I always want to maybe insert a block with a 90 degree rotation um, or a scale factor of one. Um, notice that we have a checkbox here for uniform scale so that you don't accidentally plop in a value that would skewer this block here. Uh, back in the day, people would create a block out of a circle, give it a maybe a two, two, two uh, for an X and a one on a Y, and that would give them an ellipse, okay? Or maybe a different sized window by uh, making a larger X value for scaling. Uh, for the most part, I keep mine on uniform scale nowadays. And again, I can either specify on screen here, or I can wait until the dialog, uh, uh, or I can put in my own uh, values right off the bat. So that is another typical way of seeing a block. And I just canceled out of that. Let's go ahead and create a block. And I am going to make a block out of these objects here to create a new chair. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select Create Block. And up uh, comes the Block Definition Dialog. Now this Block Definition Dialog uh, it allows me to select an existing block to redefine it, maybe. I don't want to do that right now. Or create that new block. So I'm going to create one called chair, just generic chair. I can do everything on the uh, at one time once I get out of this dialog, or I can just pick my insertion or base point for the block right now. And I'm just going to pick the midpoint. Um, I could use any point as a um, insertion point, but I want it to be something that is um, I can realistically use over and over again. So uh, if I know I'm always going to have it this far from a table, then maybe that's where I want that insertion point to be. But I'm going to have it on the object right here. The dialog appears again. I'm going to go ahead and select this and select my objects, and now it even shows a little preview because I've selected those objects. It tells me how many objects I've selected, and I'm going to select delete. We have convert to block and retain. We can make the block annotative. I won't do that in this case. Um, we have another webinar coming up on that. Allow exploding. If you don't want anybody to explode this, which um, they shouldn't anyway. You could un, um, uncheck this, and they would not be able to explode it. I could open it up in the block editor for additional modifications. We'll talk about the block editor later. You may want to use the description field. Um, just, you know, is this a dining room chair, an office chair? Uh, if the field's there, I say use it uh, to save time. I'm not going to. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click OK right now, and the block has been deleted, or the objects, I should say, have been deleted. And I'm going to go over here to my insert, 
and you'll see that we now have a um, another block here called chair. And I can certainly insert that easily enough. But I like this. Um, I want to make some additional changes to it, or I want these blocks here maybe to look like this chair. So I could replace every one of these chairs with this block, but instead what I'm going to do is create a new block based on this. Uh, this block here, by the way, is called chair one. Yes, chair one. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use the oops command. This allows me to bring back my objects without undoing the work I've done. Okay. I'm going to use that oops command. I'm again going to go into the block command. This time I'm typing B to get into this block definition dialog. And I'm going to go ahead and select chair one. And it shows me the existing picture right here. And I'm going to go ahead and select my base point. Select the objects. And I'll leave everything else as is. But I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a block this time. That way it's not going to erase it. It's not going to leave the original objects either. It's going to go ahead and create that block. Now it says here, hey, this chair one already exists. What do you want to do? Do you want to redefine it? tells me how many are in the drawing, or don't refine. If I don't refine, it gives me the chance to give it a different name. I do want to redefine it, and voila, it updates my drawing. So that um, basically is redefining a block, how we can easily update multiple symbols in a drawing. So let's take a look at object properties. So I've you know, pointed out earlier that these symbols are all on by layer. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, a command called the uh, block editor or bedit command and I'm going to use it to modify um, this particular chair which is chair one. And I can either go to this command here which actually would prompt me to create a new block or I could select an existing block and modify it. I can also do it this way just by right mouse clicking. I can go into the block editor. Now a lot of people uh, will think of a block editor as being a place to create what are called the dynamic blocks. Um, we're also going to have a future webcast on that, by the way. Um, but, but the thing is, it's a great tool just for working with the um, uh, legacy style of blocks that we already have. Here we can modify it. Heck, if we'd just gone in there and created a new block, we could actually draw a new symbology here and make a block out of it. I use it a lot to modify my existing blocks, though. So in this case, what I want to show you is that right now, all these objects, selecting them, are set to by layer. What I'm going to do is take this uh, backrest here, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to a by block property. And basically, as a default, that's the same as by layer. I'm going to go ahead and select the armrests. And these armrests, I am going to assign a color. And just for grins, I'm going to use cyan. Okay, um, it could be any color of your choice, whatever you feel makes it look livelier. And I've assigned that color to those. So again, these are by layer. The seat, the backrest is by block, and the armrests are by um, object. When you assign a color or a property to an object that makes it by object. So I'll go ahead and close the block editor. Oh, actually what I think I'll do so I don't convert all my blocks is I'll again point out this nifty little tool, Save Block As. And uh, this is the only place you're going to find this. If you want to make a copy of a block uh, and 
modify that or just have two blocks that look similar but are different, uh, have different names, you can't do that with an individual block. You need to save it as a new block. So here we can do within the drawing. And I'm going to go ahead and call this chair two just because that is such a, um, I don't know, such an original name. Yeah, we'll say that. I'll click OK. We'll click Close. And we have uh, our updated block. Right now, um, oops, I thought we had an updated block. Oh, I named it. I gave it a new name. <laughs> Okay, so for those who have been here, um, you know me. For those who haven't been here, uh, I typically have an awkward moment or two, and you've just experienced that. Uh, I've created a new block here, Chair 2. I'm going to go ahead and insert it. And there we go. All right, so as you can see, remember the armrest, everything, I assigned a color to them, so they were by object. The seat and the back. Well, the seat itself is by layer, but the backing is by, ob uh, by block. So again, by default, it inherits the properties of the by layer that the object was inserted on or drawn on. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to change the color of the object to, um, let's do green. Yeah. Okay, so... The seat itself is still um, by layer. The armrest we assigned the color cyan to because, uh, and that's always going to be assigned to that object. But because this was by block, we were able to change the individual properties of the backrest to whatever we want. And I hope that kind of makes sense there with the by block by layer, by object thing. Um, always best to experiment uh, but, uh, yourself and, and just try a few different scenarios. Okay, so having done that, let's go ahead and save this just for grins. And um, it's not just for grins, really. It's, it's a good idea to save and save often. I'm going to go ahead now. I like this block. I really like it a lot. I want to use it in my other drawings. So what I'm going to do is use a command called W block or right block. And I can type W, which is what I would typically uh, do. I would uh, type just type W. And using the W block command or right block command, I'm going to export my block to the hard drive. All right, so I'm going to take... In this case here, I could select objects in the drawing and notice that everything here is nicely available just as it is in the define block dialog. I could export the entire drawing. So why would I want to do that? Uh, if you've used the purge command, you know that it cleans up your drawing and gets rid of unused objects. The um, uh, right blocking an entire drawing is pretty much like a very fast or super purge uh, type of uh, function and it just gets rid of all of the stuff you don't need in your drawing that isn't being referenced by another object and gives you a very clean new drawing. But I want to right block a uh, right block a existing block in the drawing. And I don't even have to know where that block is. I can just choose it from a list here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, yeah, chair two is the one I like. And I'm going to go ahead and export it. I'll, I can browse to a location here. I'm going to go ahead and export it. And I can even rename it. I don't have to have it be that same name. So just for grins, I'll call it chair 2A, uh, just because I am so original with names. All right, so I'll go ahead and click Save and click OK. And it has now exported that to a um, to my AutoCAD or to my working folder. There's chair two. And in fact, I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the command line. And there it is. So, so just to prove it worked. Okay. All right. So I opened up a drawing that way. Let's try this. 
I'm going to create a new drawing. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to insert a block. Dragging it onto the command line allows me to um, uh, open the file. But if I were to drag and drop that into the drawing, I am inserting it as a block. So, what's wrong with this picture? Well, look at where my crosshair is. Uh, it's not because of how I'm inserting the block. It's because of the fact that when the block was created, a uh, base point was not properly specified. Or maybe this is a drawing file on the hard drive. It was never intended to be um, a block, okay, to be inserted in another drawing. Somebody just drew it um, as an individual project, right? So they didn't think about an insertion point if uh, this was to be used as a block. So how can we fix this? Let me go ahead and finish the insert prompt here. All right. And I've inserted it. And, okay, that worked fine. It's now in the drawing. If I go to the insert command, there's chair three. Again, I'll click OK. And again, that base point is bad. A couple of things we can do here. One, we have a cool option that was introduced, I think it was in AutoCAD 2005. Yeah, 2000, uh, 2005, so 10, 11 releases ago. And it's called Base Point. And basically what this allows me to do is choose a new base point. So maybe I want it to be about right there. Or maybe I want to be a little more specific, okay, and, um, oh, I forgot to regen. So I'm just going to grab the midpoint, and uh, trust me, there's the midpoint O snap. Yes, yay. All right, and now I've said, okay, for right now, that's where I want the insertion point to be. So I, I don't really have to worry about it that much, but if I were to redefine this block, it would definitely move those optics to a different location. Let's take a look at it this way. Uh, I'm going to go, whoops, draw a line from the insertion point of this block. Okay, so we know where the block's insertion point is. And there are numerous ways to fix this. But one of them is just to go ahead and um, open up the block in a drawing by itself. So I'm going to go here and I'll open up chair three. And actually before I do that, I almost forgot to start another new drawing because I want to show you another example as well. Go ahead and insert that here. All right, great. Enter, enter, enter. Okay, so let's go back here. We've opened up chair three. We have two instances of that here. And what I'm going to do is just use a command called base. And that is set base point. And basically, um, right now what's happening is the insertion point for this block is zero, zero right here. Now, let's pretend this is a uh, building and it's been drawn in real-world coordinates at a particular point in the drawing that matches up with other drawings points, okay? Um, we probably don't want to move this block to zero, zero and save it uh, because it might screw up other drawings. So we want to leave the, uh, the origin the same. And that's why we would use this base point and we'll go ahead and pick this is a new base point. And if I repeat the command, you'll see that instead of 0, 0, kind of hard to see on the command line, I should have made the text larger, but uh, it is now at negative 10, negative 10, negative 0 for the x. Okay, so we've changed the, um, the uh, base point for this. And if I save this drawing now, and I'll go back to drawing two. 
using the insert command, I'm going to browse to my chair three. That's what I need. And I'm going to insert that. I'm going to click OK. And yeah, I do want to redefine. And notice how now it has the proper insertion point. Going back to drawing three, there's another way to do this. If I just want to save it in this drawing, I don't want to modify the original file. I'm going to go ahead and use B edit. I type B E at the command prompt. I'm going to select my objects. I'm going to use the move command, typing M at the command prompt. Selecting the midpoint here, I will go ahead and move it to 0, 0. And I'll go ahead and close the block editor and save changes to the chair. Now, we didn't see it move. I didn't draw a line. But if I select this, the grip on a block is always going to be at its insertion point. So we can see that um, we have moved it to uh, a new insertion point or base point. And that's a uh, great way to update it as well. All right, so that was the base command. Let's take another look uh, before we finish up. We'll spend about four more minutes here in the original drawing. I just want to talk about uh, nested blocks right now. And here we have a whole bunch of blocks, obviously. And if I zoom out, I mean, I've got a floor plan here. I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to do some cookie cutter developing here. And I may want to use this later on in some of the other um, dining areas. And why worry about placement of these particular uh, chairs around a table and so forth? Why not just make one block out of it? I'm going to go ahead and select it. And I'm going to type B for the block definition dialog. I'll call this dining set. And it's already selected the objects. It tells me that it's selected eight objects. I'm going to pick a base point. Uh, again, I can be very specific or, um, I, you know, I could make it the corner of this building or whatever. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and select the midpoint of the chair and click OK. And, of course, I want, I'm just going to convert it to a block. And you'll see it's now treated as one object. And if I use the insert command, I'm going to go ahead and plop it there, and I've got my precast dining set. I'm going to use the W block command, and I'm going to go ahead and select that dining set. And we're going to plop it in that same folder I did my other one. I'm now going to go to start another new drawing, and I'm going to insert that dining set. Let's move up one folder. There it is. I'm going to use a different option here, though. Um, right now, it's set. If I bring it in right now, um, maybe I want those ind chairs as individual objects. The table as an individual object. Um, I don't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and explode this block. Clicking on explode, I'll click OK. I'll pick my point on the screen. And I now have individual objects. Why did I bother that? In this case, maybe I, I would have wanted the, it as one object. Um, but if I were to insert any other drawing from the hard drive, what happens is that um, I will we'll compare these two drawings here in a moment. I'm again going to go ahead and insert that block. Oops, I need to browse for it. And this time, I'm going to uncheck the explode, op explode option and click OK. And I'll place that in the drawing. And of course, it's treated as one. So having brought this in, I've brought in 
the block definitions. If we take a look at our, uh, actually this might be better, we take a look at our um, gallery here, you'll see we have the dining, dining set. It's also brought in the table and chair. Realistically, all I really needed was the tables and chairs because I'm not going to have the dining set look like this. I'm going to make some modifications. Maybe I only want it to be four chairs per side, right? So I didn't, I don't need this overhead. After I explode this, which will turn it into separate blocks, I'm still going to have the dining set as a definition in the drawing. If we take a look over here, where I exploded the block first to where it's individual blocks, because I exploded it, I only have the table and the chairs as a block definition in the drawing. Okay, I don't have the overhead of the entire block. Uh, if I bring in an entire drawing from the hard drive, that is maybe a complete floor plan with all kinds of blocks in it. I really need the blocks. I even need the walls and stuff, but I don't need the stuff duplicated as a definition in the drawing. So maybe I want to explode that as I insert it so that it's not all treated as one object, but that I have individual components and not the overhead of the initial reference. I hope that makes sense. I'd say give it a try one day with uh, inserting another drawing uh, into a brand new drawing with the explode op option on and one without the explode option on. So, uh, good example. I think that may be it. I, there's a lot more two blocks. There really is. We just don't have time if we want to answer your questions. Um, we are going to call it quits on that. I'm going to have um, Victoria run a quick poll, and then I'll uh, finish up the PowerPoint real quick. Sounds and good. And we'll take some Q&A. Uh, Volker, we're seeing your other screen there. I want to pull AutoCAD back up. Um, so I will. Uh, I'll run the last poll here. Uh, we'd like to know, did you learn something today in the webinar? Did you learn something new? Um, hopefully we were able to teach you a little bit about blocks. Um, maybe we can cover uh, some of the things that Volker didn't get to today in a Beyond the Basics session on blocks in the future. Um, if you let us know in your feedback on this webinar, if you'd like to see that or not, that would be really helpful. All right, I'll leave this open for a few more seconds. Got about 68% of people voted, so uh, a couple more seconds here if you want to get your vote in. Go ahead and cast that, and I'll close it out. And I'll display those results for you. Looks like 84% of people learned something new, and 16% did not. Volker? Uh, okay. Well, um, I guess we'd all be happier if we had like 100% of you learning something new. That's never going to happen. Um, but um, uh, for those who uh, really didn't learn anything new, keep in mind this was a back to basics webinar because we never want to waste your time. Okay, um, But we also don't know the extent of, uh, of knowledge that uh, is out there. And um, we do try to improve with the Beyond the Basics webinar uh, to show you some more advanced stuff. Hopefully, uh, if you attend that, uh, you're going to learn something. For those who did learn something, great. I'm glad I was able to pass that along. Victoria and I, um, we do spend a little bit of time trying to put these together and get, getting something good out there. So um, some additional resources. Uh, Always check out the Autodesk Knowledge Network, which uh, Naman uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, I've also got some links to uh, the block command itself and block definitions. Working with the block editor, uh, a few weeks down the road, we're going to um, do some dynamic blocks. So uh, the block editor 
really comes in handy then. Uh, a reference on block object properties. Again, the script that we're going to have in the data set for you to download uh, is pretty uh, pretty good about explaining the three differences. And uh, then we have the uh, insert command as well as using Design Center to um, insert blocks. So some great resources there. And, whoops, one slide too many. So some of the coming attractions, we don't have them all on the list yet, um, but uh, we're going to have our third dimension series next week. Steve and Victoria will be presenting that. And after that, uh, we have a Beyond the Basics, working with uh, attributes, adding some intelligence to your drawings. Attributes are very cool, very cool indeed. And uh, the next one we have after that is quite a ways down the road, but uh, we're going to have others on the schedule as well in between. Uh, but uh, we are going to have a, another productivity tips and tricks session. So those are always fun. We have fun with those, and I hope you do as well, as well as learn something. You can um, register for us, uh, invite your friends to register, uh, family, friends, pets, we accept pets. Um, leave additional feedback on the link provided there. You can also send us uh, feedback. Be sure, and I'm kind of skipping ahead here because we've kind of gone over the landing page before, earlier. Um, if you're going to send us email feedback, please include the subject line, build your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, there are several webinars that we host, not our team, but other teams at Autodesk, and this subject line will allow us to get to you a lot faster. So um, send us your thoughts. We're open to those. Let's see, Q&A. Any, uh, any questions or or was that really good? <laughs> well, we do have some questions. Um, Noman, did you want to jump back in here if your audio is working and ask some questions, or uh, would you rather I do it? Audio must not be working. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me uh, let me jump back here for a second. We do have quite a few questions here, Volker. Let's see. Okay. Um, actually, uh, let's start with this one here. Um, how essential are units in creating a block? Can you talk a little bit about units and blocks, Volker? Yeah, certainly. So, um, well, they are. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna work with, um, let's say you. You work with uh, imperial units, and um, you get a lot of work from uh, outside contractors, or maybe you're the contractor, uh, um, and those organizations work with metric units. Then you want to make sure that your drawings are um, have the proper units applied to them. You know, by default, everything's decimal and basically unit less because a decimal unit is um, uh, can be anything you want it to be. But if I'm in an architectural drawing, which by coincidence I am, and I insert a drawing which has units of imperial applied to it, then the chair, or excuse me, metric units, then the chair from the metric drawing, if I insert it into this drawing, will scale to the imperial unit equivalent. And there are a couple of um, things you need to be aware of. First of all, of course, is the units command itself. I typed units at the command prompt. And here's where we could set the units for um, the current drawing. So in this case, architectural. We can also, there's a command here called ends units. All right, this here sets the default unit for any new drawing or converted drawing from, say, pre-AutoCAD release for 2000, pre-2000, or a third-party application. We also have 
ends um, def is it def default? Uh, Victoria ends default. Oh, let's just do it this way. Go ends units. I don't remember this. It'll one. have. Yeah, I I just actually just used it earlier today. My mind's drawing a blank. So the easiest way to find out what the heck else is Volker talking about is to go into the AutoCAD help, which I've just done for the um, ends unit system variable. And here, by the way, are all the different. You know, if you have to draw in light years or parsecs, hey, you never know. Um, I'm just going to go in here and talk. Uh, go insert. I can't believe I, it's slipping tip of my tongue there. In death sorcerer. Okay, let's get to another question. I'll look this up while we're um, uh, answering another question as well. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. When would you use uh, blocks versus group? What are the... Oh, of... uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good question, and I didn't bring up groups. Um, I think, you know, that, that, that really is a matter of, you know, what your workflow is in your CAD environment. My personal preference would be to use groups within a drawing. If I know I'm not going to use those objects elsewhere. Um, if um, I know I want to, I don't know, they, it gives me more options to work with objects as a block but not a block. So for example, I could create a group out of this. Oh, I forget what the group command is. Uh, so I'll just type G for group. And I've created a group right now. It's unnamed. And it's treated as one object here. I think the nice thing about it is is that um, um, I can, where is it? Probably wasn't the best example because I've got blocks. It's individual objects work better, really. Uh, never ad lib in front of people, okay? I'm just I, I, I think you explained that pretty well, though, Volker, um, where you would use uh, groups for things that, you know, you might want to group them together uh, one time. Right. But blocks, uh, you know, if you have, if you're planning to use your chair, you know, over and over and over again, uh, but in different configurations, yes. that's where you might want to use a block. Instead. Right. Yeah, over and over again, or when to update. That's the one thing you can't do is update multiple groups. Um, maybe you can if you name them. I forget. But here's one thing too: as a group, this is treated as one object right now. But what I can do is, without going into B Edit or something else, I can um, select all the line work and maybe put it on a different layer. So. Notice the layers changing here, right? So the group command allows me to select individual objects through the property palette and still modify those, at least the properties of them. A block, you couldn't easily do that without B edit or ref edit. Sure. So, Speaking of ref. Yeah, edit, I personally. Yes, yes. yes. Um, actually, before I ask you the last question. Um, Noman actually put this in the chat window. INS units def source and INS Thank units you. def target were the two that you were looking for. He Those were them. I like just I just worked with them. <laughs> Noman, you are the man. Um, I I just worked with those this morning, and I just could not spit them out, could I? They're not easy to remember off the top of your head, and yeah. I don't auto populate in the command line. Um, so, so last question, Volker. Um, ref what, edit. Yeah. What What's the difference between um, block edit, so B edit, and uh, ref edit? And is there a uh, reason you would use one over the other with regular blocks? Um, so uh, again, matter of personal preference. I uh, so 
um, block edit is going to allow you to save as a different name. You don't always have to redefine the block, right? Uh, uh, ref edit was actually, uh, when it was introduced, it was it allowed you to work with reference files, external reference files. That's what it was. Uh, that was what the original intent was. But a block, just like an external reference, they're both blocks. Okay, and so I can with ref edit. So I'll go ahead and uh, select this uh, and uh, edit block in place. That's ref edit. Okay, that chair. What's nice about ref edit is that it easily allows me to add stuff or remove stuff uh, from an, from my the object that I'm editing. Okay. that chair too, right? I'm going to go ahead and make this a combination. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my working set. Notice how it's now uh, a brighter color, right? I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to move this uh, like this. All right, so we have a tandem of chairs. And this is really going to screw up, I think, some of these chairs. I can't recall if these were the same ones. doesn't matter. Once I save those changes, um, it's going to update uh, any block reference. Okay, I didn't have any other ones in there, but now this reference right here, which is chair, if I insert it, you know, I've 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 basically redefined it. Okay, um, I. An easy job of, of being allowing you to redefine a block without having to explode it, because in the past that's what we would have to do is explode it. All right, thanks, Volker. So, we are at the top of the hour right. here, so why don't we? Uh, right. Let's thank thank everybody. Thank you very much for um, joining us today. Yes, um, thanks. We yep. we all know your time is valuable, so um, we appreciate you being here. And thank you, Victoria, and Naman as well. Yes. All right. See you guys next week. Hope. Yep. Hopefully. Take care, guys. Bye.